Principal at St Edward's Academy in Cheddleton. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce you to our Early Years Easter Service 2021. Ordinarily, our children will be leading the service in church, but that's not an option for us at the moment. However, I am sure you will be equally as impressed and hope that you enjoy the service that they are about to share. Thank you. Everyone, welcome to Great Easter Service. Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. On Palm Sunday, you remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Cutting down those palm branches. So you might suppose we have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. We have a king who rides a donkey. In the Bible, it says in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. It, it's time to reflect. Now listen, I'm the
Easter Sunday, Jesus rose again. Jesus rose again and then went back to his father in heaven. When we get to all now, perform This is why Jesus said to me, Bob, back on the car. Show how much he loves us. Let us cry. God's Easter. Brand new life of spring. Baby chicks on the left. Oh, your son Jesus. Love at his wings. Aww. Thank you for watching our Easter service. Welcome to this service on Easter Day. On this day it's custom for the service to begin with the lighting of the Easter candle and you might want to pause this video for a moment while you prepare your own candle for lighting. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has made us a light to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And so we say sorry to God. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Hear us, Lord, and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing in your mercy. Forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image 
to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We keep a moment of silence before the say the collect together. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading is taken from John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and, will take, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I am not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Often today you'll hear that very unchristian phrase, well, he got what he deserved. Today we celebrate the wonderful joy of Easter and the resurrection. I wonder, would you say that Jesus got what he deserved? I suppose some of the crowd there at the time would have said exactly that. For three years, Jesus had been the central figure in the lives of many people. The whole purpose of his life being to bring healing and forgiveness and restoration. Unfortunately, many prominent figures of the day found that to be a threat. They wanted rid of him. They wanted him to, in their opinion, get what he deserved. Even one of his closest friends sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. The death Jesus died was one of a criminal hanging on the cross until he was dead. His friends and followers would never say that he got what he deserved. His friends knew, and we know, that he didn't deserve the cross. And so we pick up our reading for today. Three days later, a woman called Mary solemnly made her way to his tomb. No doubt her heart was low, her eyes full of tears, her life devastated at the loss and the injustice of it all. The one on whom she had pinned all her hopes, 
was dead, cruelly murdered on a cross. It was over, finished. He'd got something he had done nothing to deserve, or so she thought. In this time of COVID-19, there are hundreds of thousands of people all over the world who have caught something that they've done nothing to deserve and our hearts go out to them. When Mary arrived at the tomb, her grief was compounded. The tomb was empty. He'd gone. I wonder whatever she must have thought. Was this some cruel act? Who was doing what, where and why to his body? It seems that she wasn't even allowed to grieve in peace. He really was gone. Her first reaction was to run and tell the other disciples who came and checked it out for themselves. Only they took it a stage further because they actually went inside the empty tomb. And it was there that they saw the linen wrappings lying and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. They couldn't understand it. Puzzled, they went home. But Mary, well, she stayed weeping, but she stayed there. Her waiting was rewarded, first by angels who questioned, why was she upset? And then Mary turned around and saw someone she thought to be the gardener. Desperate for answers, Mary asked, do you know where he is? If you do, tell me so that I can help. And then in the stillness, she heard the most wonderful voice of all time. Jesus said to her, Mary. There he was, standing before her, greeting her as he had done so many times before. Defeat had been turned into victory, not just for Mary, but for all of us. And it's a victory that we share, not just by proxy, but first hand. It's a victory which means new life for all, new beginnings, new hope, the assurance that whatever we might face, nothing can stand between us and the love of God in Christ Jesus. On the cross, Jesus received what he didn't deserve. By his resurrection, we have received something we have done nothing to deserve. He's done it for us. On the cross, as we know, Jesus has taken every punishment going and removed them from the face of the earth. Unbelievable, but absolutely true. This is the message of Easter. In what the world counted as defeat, Jesus won the greatest of victories, triumphing over evil and death. It seems too good to be true. In him we have something we don't deserve. The gift, the promise of eternal life. Nothing we could ever hope to achieve on our own. Nothing we could ever hope to deserve on our own. In Christ we have the victory. It is he who has claimed the crown for us. It is he who has opened up the way to heaven. This is the message of Easter Day. We've heard it before and we'll hear it again and again, but surely these are words that are worth hearing over and over again. In Christ and through Christ, we are saved. Could we ask for anything more? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We say together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles, 
This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. The response used today is, Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. In joy and hope we pray for to the Father, that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the news, good news of Easter. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer that he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence into the sick, the weak and the dying to comfort and strengthen them. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Come, risen Lord, and hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We end our service today with prayers of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus is Lord of all creation. We worship and adore you. Jesus made his home among us. We worship and adore you. Jesus died to set us free. We worship and adore you. Jesus was raised to life again. We worship and adore you. And so we come to our blessing and we pray together. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we continue to live and work in the power of your Spirit to your praise and glory. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as is the custom on Easter Day, there's now an opportunity to renew your baptism vows if you'd like to. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life within the family of his church. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. May Almighty God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you the strength to continue in the way. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen.